to me, the Switch Lite is a great system. Despite its restrictions of being a mostly handheld device, I'm going to show you how I fully maximize playing the Switch Lite in both portable and dock mode. What's up guys, Zami here and you're watching Heavy Metal Pump. There are literally so many accessories when it comes to the Switch Lite. Today I'm going to talk about some of the better ones that not only work great but enhances the playing experience with a Switch Lite. I also want to point out that I'm not sponsored by any of the companies that will be mentioned in this video and that I bought all of this with my own money. With that said, let's just get to it. First up, I want to go over the accessories that are always on my Switch Lite no matter how I'm playing it. The most important accessory for me is a grip case. I'm generally a pretty careful person but accidents happen anyway and I'd hate it if something happened to my Switch Lite that could have been prevented. I'm currently using the Skull & Co grip case and I really like it cause it serves two purposes. Firstly, it's made of this TPU material which not only protects the system really well but it even covers the triggers. Secondly, it comes with three grip options that provide better comfort when playing in handheld mode. I will admit, the triggers being covered does feel slightly weird and will take some getting used to. With that said, it shouldn't be a big issue if the games you play don't really rely on the trigger buttons all that much. Plus, I just like having that extra sense of security knowing that my triggers are less prone to damage. The next accessory is also by Skull & Co and it is their thumb grips. These ones are obviously for the Switch but they also make ones for other systems and controllers. What I like about these thumb grips is that they come in 3 different sizes and even has a raised one that benefits FPS games. They also look really clean and minimal and looks really seamless on the system. I think the Switch Lite especially needs thumb grips because the white thumbsticks can be prone to getting dirty over time. Last but not least, I have a tempered glass screen protector from Osley on my Switch Lite. While getting a screen protector from pretty much any brand is good enough, what I like about these ones from Osley is that the size is pretty much identical to that on the Switch Lite. It also comes in a 4-pack so if you mess up the installation or if you happen to need extras, this will pretty much cover that. With that covered, let's go over how I play the Switch Lite in handheld mode. I want to briefly go over the case that I use for my Switch Lite. I'm using the Waterfield CD Slicker case with grips option. I've done a full review of it which you can check out over here, so I'm not really gonna talk about it too much. The TLDR is that it's a premium carrying case that houses the Switch Lite with grip case on it and even has some extra space for other stuff. The next accessory is the Gullicate Root Plus. Now, why the Switch doesn't have Bluetooth audio, we'll never know. Whatever it is, the Root Plus helps you to connect any Bluetooth earbud or headphones to the Switch. Now, I will admit, I don't think that the Gullicate Root Plus is the best option out there. There's one from Genki, Homuspot, and so many others, but there's a specific reason as to why I chose the Gullicate Root Plus. Firstly, it still has pass-through charging, so even though you have this attached to the switch, you can still continue to charge the system. The main reason, however, is that most of these audio adapters sit flush to the system, which sounds great, but can be a problem if you have pretty much any grip case on the switch. The Root Plus is fully compatible with the Skull & Co grip case. It even comes with a C-shaped adapter that better conceals the Root Plus so that there's nothing jutting out below the switch. With that said, my brother uses the Genki adapter with his switch and he managed to find the same exact C-shaped adapter to use with it and it works perfectly fine. So take that information with what you will. Now that you have Bluetooth audio capabilities with the switch, you need Bluetooth earbuds or headphones. You can pretty much just use any Bluetooth audio device that you already have. The ones I use are the KZ-S2s. Not only are these really affordable, but they sound great for the price and they even have a low latency mode which is great for gaming. Next up, let's talk about keeping your switch all juiced up when you're playing it outside. The power bank I'm using is the Anchor Power Core. It's officially licensed by Nintendo and comes in two capacities. The one I have is 13,400mAh but it also comes in a whopping 20,100mAh version if you happen to need all that juice. Now here's the thing, you're pretty much fine with using any old power bank, especially if it has PD charging capabilities. However, the problem with the Switch is that it adheres to its own PD protocol. I'm not gonna talk about it any further, but you can check out this video from Wolfden on why you're better off using stuff that's licensed by Nintendo, especially when it comes to power related issues. Moving on, I'm gonna talk about how I play the Switch Lite in tabletop mode. I know this seems pretty excessive and unnecessary, but I found that this has come in handy for games that just work better in tabletop mode or if I'm just charging the Switch Lite while gaming. I'm just using a generic phone stand to prop the Switch Lite up with the 8-bit Do Light controller. 
Now there's definitely better controllers out there, but I think that the 8-bit Do Lite is really portable and still has all the buttons that a Switch has. The 8-bit Do Zero 2 is definitely much more portable, but it doesn't have all the buttons that you might need. For me, the 8-bit Do Lite definitely has a better size to functionality ratio. I also want to point out that most of the accessories I've mentioned so far can actually fit in the City Slicker case all at once. It's definitely a tight fit and my earbuds don't fit either, but I do like having all of them consolidated together even though it all goes in my bag. Lastly, I want to talk about how I play the Switch Lite in dark mode. Now I know what you're thinking. The Switch Lite doesn't have dark mode. There's no HDMI out. Yes, you're not wrong. However, that doesn't mean that you can't dock the Switch Lite entirely. I'm just gonna talk about the accessories that I use for that and explain along the way. First up, let's talk about the dock itself. Obviously, it's not compatible with the official dock for the Switch. The one I'm using is another Skull & Co product and it's the Jump Gate dock. Again, this is obviously meant for a normal Switch but there's still benefit to using a dock for the Switch Lite. Now, because the Jump Gate dock doesn't sandwich the system like the official dock, it's fully compatible with a Switch Lite. Also, the dock is meant to be compatible with most grip cases so you can easily dock this with the grip case on. The dock also provides a USB-C port, HDMI out which is redundant for our case, and two USB-A ports. The USB-C port, I just use for charging the switch. I'm just using the official power brick that came with the switch for that. Now for the two USB-A ports, you're pretty much free to use whatever works best for you but here's what I use. First up, I've got a LAN adapter hooked up to it. The one I'm using is from Ugreen but pretty much any USB LAN adapter will work perfectly fine. I think a LAN adapter helps a lot if the Wi-Fi in your home is unstable, which is why I use it. I just have it hooked up with a Cat6 Ethernet cable to my router. My LAN adapter is also technically USB-C because I used to just plug this directly into my Switch Lite whenever I need an Ethernet connection. I just use a USB-C to USB-A converter for this current setup. Now before I talk about what I plug into the second port, let's talk controllers for a bit. There are so many good controllers that are compatible with the Switch. You can pretty much just use whatever works best for you but I use the 8-bit Do SN30 Pro Plus. I prefer using this over most other controllers for the Switch because it doesn't have an offset layout which I'm more accustomed to. I'm not gonna go too in-depth about it but it's a great wireless controller. It even has rumble which the Switch Lite doesn't have so consider that a bonus feature. Now, what if you wanted to use a controller that's not compatible with the Switch? Luckily, there's a way around that. The 8-bit Do USB wireless adapter lets you use pretty much any Bluetooth controller with the Switch irregardless of compatibility. This allows me to use my DualShock 4 with my Switch Lite which I prefer using for FPS games. It works pretty well overall but sometimes it takes a while to pair for me. Also, the physical size of it is pretty wide so I had to use a USB extension to plug it in the dock together with the LAN adapter. Of course, this can all be avoided if you're already using a controller that's Switch compatible but it's always nice to have options. Especially if you already have an Xbox or PS4 controller and don't want to shell out a bunch of money for another controller, this adapter can be a pretty cost-efficient solution. Now as a bonus, I want to talk about one last accessory that didn't work for this setup. Initially, I bought the Hori Dual USB Playstand for my docked setup. It works perfectly fine but the problem is that I can't dock my Switch Lite on it with the grip case on. That's why I ended up getting the Jump Gate dock from Skull & Co cause it just works more seamlessly with my overall setup. With that said, if you don't use a grip case on your system, the play stand will work just fine so use whatever works best for you. So that's how I play my Switch Lite in both handheld and docked mode. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my ultimate Switch Lite setup. Other than that, hope you liked the video. Like, subscribe, all that YouTube nonsense, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.